Today's video is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. The original Halloween is a horror classic that some say created the modern slasher despite having minimal gore. Halloween 2 then tried to copy the slashers that helped create and went more graphic with it to mixed results. So the only clear option was to meet in the middle and try to turn Halloween into an anthology series with a different Halloween themed story every year that has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Most franchises just have a 3D version for the third movie, but sure, upending the entire heart and soul of the series is also an option. That's when you know everything is normal and good. Halloween 3 begins in the spookiest location ever and on the spookiest day, Northern California on October 23rd. I mean, you got Bigfoot and all the marijuana growers living in the woods, and both will murder you if you come into their territory. Hell no, I'm not going to Northern California. We see Harry Grimbridge being pursued by a car in the middle of the night, and he runs to a junkyard to hide, but he gets strangled by an 80s power broker. Trickle down economics is the future. <laughs> As Harry's being ever so lightly strangled to death, he manages to pull a chalk from under a car and crushes him. And so another assassin gets out of the car and chases Harry for an hour. A gas station attendant is watching a news report about one of the stones from Stonehenge that was stolen, and we then get to watch our first Silver Shamrock Novelties Halloween commercial. It's morning to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. It's morning to Halloween, Silver Shamrock. Silver Shamrock is doing a non-stop ad blitz to promote their big three Halloween masks that are taken the nation by storm. A skeleton, a jack-o'-lantern, and a witch. Those are some bold Halloween mask ideas. And for some insane reason in this universe, skeleton, jack-o'-lantern, and witch are all trademarked names. So for legal purposes, the skeleton is called Mr. Bones the Jangle, the jack-o'-lantern is the Peter Pumpkin O'Shaughnessy mask, and the evil witch mask is just called Midge. Now why did the screenwriters decide that skeleton, jack-o'-lantern, and witch should be trademarked in this universe? I have no idea but it does add to the creepy factor, because it just makes no sense. The attendant is investigating a noise when Harry lunges at him and cryptically says, <laughs> They're coming. Before collapsing with the Peter Pumpkin O'Shaughnessy mask in hand. Seriously, this movie came out in 1982, way before the internet, and I guarantee a number of people didn't get the memo about this movie, and at this point, they were just sitting there wondering where the hell Michael Myers is. We then meet Dr. Daniel Chalice, who is just the most dad-looking character ever. I mean, look at this dude. He looks like he has 100% said, guess it's free then, when an item won't scan at the store. I guarantee the character of Dr. Chalice has definitely uttered the phrase, jeez Louise, at some minor inconvenience. He definitely answers the phone, yellow. If anyone mentions buying an extended warranty, Dr. Chalice will always chime in with, that's how they get you. If you're in his way when he's watching TV, you will inevitably hear, you make a better door than you do a window. He has 100% stood in the middle of his yard with his hands on his hips, just taking it all in. And you know he tears paper towels in half in order to save money. And if it's gonna be in the 60s next week, he will definitely let you know. Dads love it when it's in the 60s. So Dan Chalice is an alcoholic doctor who has two young children with his ex-wife Linda, who is confusingly played by the same actress who played Annie in the original Halloween. Like if I was watching this in the theater, my brain would be frantically trying to figure out how they brought Annie back to life and how she fits in this new Michael Myers storyline. Dr. Chalice bought his kids masks for Halloween, but Linda already bought them masks from Silver Shamrock. Dr. Chalice gets called to the hospital to take care of Harry, and when he gets there, the dude starts to freak out when the Silver Shamrock commercial comes on, and he whispers, They're going to kill us. Who, Midge? Or Peter Pumpkin O'Shaughnessy? Better not be talking about Mr. Bones' jangle. They get him stabilized, and the hospital's now quiet, so Dr. Chalice goes to take a nap. I think I should have married you, Agnes. <laughs> Dr. Chalice is just the perfect character for his time. Dude's got everything 1982 requires in a man's man. Sweet f***ing mustache, check. Imitation members only jacket, check. Tenuous grip on sobriety, check. Casual sexual harassment of subordinates, you know that's a check. That night, the dude in the power suit sneaks into the hospital and rips out Harry's nose bone, and then walks out to the parking lot and sets himself on fire. Hi. Call an ambulance? We're already at the hospital, Doug. Are you drunk too? The next day, Harry's daughter Ellie comes to the hospital to positively ID him. What happened? Oh, well, some crazy man. Killed himself in the parking lot right after. Drugs, probably. Is Extremely that it? Jive. My father's dead because of some crazy- I'm just spitballing. 
I mean, for all I know, your father was a low-rent gigolo specializing in lemon parties. Oh, it probably started out as a way for him to make extra money to pay for his cocaine habit, but then the lifestyle itself became the drug and your father was powerless to stop it. But I imagine your dad was seriously trying to get out of the lemon party game, and the man who killed him was most likely his pimp and lover, and his pimp decided that if he couldn't have your father, then no one could. Oh, she left. Was it something I said? I, I don't know. I said it was a guess. And Chalice asks his friend Teddy to perform an autopsy on the killer. We then get to Friday the 29th and Dr. Chalice is drinking alone in a bar and he's watching TV and we learn that Halloween is a movie that exists in this universe and it's being advertised that they're going to show the movie Halloween on Halloween followed by a big giveaway by Silver Shamrock at 9. Ellie Grimbridge finds Dr. Chalice at the bar and recruits Chalice to help her find out why her father was killed. Harry Grimbridge was the proprietor of a small local store and according to his records he was going to the Silver Shamrock factory on October 20th to pick up a new shipment of masks and he didn't show up again until he was killed on the night of the 23rd. So Chalice and Ellie drive to the Silver Shamrock factory in Santa Mira after they pick up some road beers for Dr. Chalice, of course. You think he's gonna ride sober? To Santa Mira. You know how long a drive that is? And we learn that Irish businessman Connell Cochran converted the factory to a toy factory after World War II, and the town of Santa Mira exists purely to serve the factory. And Santa Mira is made up of predominantly Irish people. So I guess Dr. Chalice won't have any trouble finding alcohol? I mean, no judgment, I'm drunk right now. Chalice and Ellie pretend to be a husband and wife who are interested in buying a shipment of masks from Silver Shamrock, and they find a motel to stay at. Chalice sneaks behind the counter and finds the Harry Grimbridge stayed at that same motel on October 20th. Also staying at the hotel Hotel are shop owners Marge Gutman and the eccentric Buddy and Betty Cupfer and their son Buddy Jr. And they're all there to pick up shipments of masks from Silver Shamrock. Does Silver Shamrock not deliver? So they have a solid lead and time is of the essence. We'll go directly to the factory. We'll Whoa, find out hold exactly on. Slow down. Slow down. I could use a drink. But the doctor needs his medicine. So I guess it's a good thing he's in an Irish town. So there should be three knobs on the faucet, Doc. Hot water, cold water, and Jameson. It's okay with you? To stay, I mean. I think these uh, clothes could probably hold out for at least one more day. I mean, I did pass out in a public bathroom last night in these clothes, but the floor was the cleanest I've ever seen, and I was about four feet from the largest of the puddles of urine, so I should be good. I could sleep in the car. Be better in this floor, anyway. Where do you want to sleep, Dr. Chalice? That's a dumb question, Miss Grimbridge. I of course want to sleep in a bathtub full of ice while still wearing the clothes from the night before. My wallet will be missing and I'll be about 30 miles from my house. I'll have a feeling of great shame, but at this point the shame is almost a comfort because at least I feel something. I just now realize you're talking about sex. At 6 p.m. an announcement comes over the loudspeakers from Jamie Lee Curtis saying that the curfew is in effect and everyone is to stay in their homes. So Silver Shamrock has instituted a nightly curfew in this town? That is a lot of control for a novelty shop. That would be like if Spirit Halloween controlled an entire town. And Spirit Halloween doesn't allow you out after 6 because that's when the seasonal employees roam the streets and they don't want you to be cornered by Brandon. So we finally get a glimpse of the world famous Silver Shamrock factory and if it looks dumpy, that's because it was filmed at the real working corrugated box factory of, you guessed it, Timmy Tonka. Timmy owed a lot of money to some scary people so he'd rent out his factory for movie productions, laser tag events, a dumping ground for radioactive waste from Borneo, and to teenagers who wanted a place to smoke and make out. So Chalice ignores the curfew because he hasn't had any sweet, sweet nectar in about 20 minutes. And on his way back to the motel, he runs into a homeless man named Starker. I, I ain't got no diseases. You mind if I have a drink? Mm. You are a doctor, and you are in an alley sharing a bottle with a vagrant. Maybe it's time to reevaluate your life. We learned from Starker that Cochran brought in all the factory workers from outside of Santa Mira. Is this movie, like, a less dark version of Willy Wonka? So Cochran brought in workers from the outside, just like Willy Wonka's Oompa Loompas, which were brought in from Loompa Land, and Timmy Tonka's Dumpy Lumpies, which were brought in from Lansing, Michigan. Starker tells Chalice that they're being watched, and then loudly exclaims that he's gonna burn the factory down with Molotov cocktails. The corrugated box factory was also set on fire by Timmy Tonka's son Jake and there's just pretty much been a fire in the middle of the factory for over 20 years. The fire never spreads and it also never burns out. The working theory is that the toxic sludge created a kind of fire magnet which protected the rest of the factory from burning but created a self-sustaining fire underneath that can never be extinguished. 
It doesn't hold the world record for longest burning fire, but it does hold the world record for longest burning man-made fire that appears to have opened a gateway to hell. So Starker goes stumbling off into the night and two enforcers from the factory find him and rip his head off. <laughs> now that's what I call a complaint department. <laughs> Can we get that at my work for when Fred's too loud on his phone? <laughs> <laughs> Ellie is talking to Marge Gutman, who's complaining that it's getting more and more difficult to get her orders placed at the factory, and that the quality is slipping because the silver shamrock emblem fell off the mask that she has. Dr. Chalice calls his coroner friend to see if the autopsy was completed on Harry Grimbridge's murderer. Someone made a colossal boo-boo. We've been doing an autopsy on part of the car. Just plastic and metal shavings. Two days wasted because somebody mixed up the envelopes. It took you two days to realize you were dissecting plastic? Why would you ever admit that? Just say the results were inconclusive. Trust me, if I do something dumb, I am covering that shit up any way that I can. I gotta check back with you tomorrow. All right, Sherlock. Ciao. Was that a derogatory use of the word Sherlock? Chalice has his issues, but he wasn't doing an autopsy on a car for two days. So Dr. Chalice goes back to the motel room and he and Ellie have sex. Now, I don't know if they are having sex again. Or if after she propositioned him, Chalice immediately went out to share a fifth of vodka with a homeless man and then came back to have sex with her. Either way, she's making out with a dude who just shared saliva with a bum. How old are you? <laughs> Relax. I'm older than I look. Chalice is a mess and she is all about him. Now that is a man who is in full control. Full control of women, I mean, not his drinking. Oh dear lord. No, not his drinking. Marge is in a room reading when she notices the silver shamrock emblem has a processor chip hidden inside. And since Marge is clearly someone who has said the phrase, I like to do my own research, thank you, she jabs at it with a pair of tweezers and a bright beam flashes into her face and turns her into this. Okay, all right, Halloween 3, it took you a half hour, but I'm intrigued. The factory sends a number of people in lab coats to take Marge's body away. And even Connell Cochran himself shows up and Chalice asks where they're taking her. They're taking her to the factory. Cochran should be careful here. Timmy Tonka got in trouble for using his factory to practice medicine without a license also. He offered something called shin extensions? Chalice and Ellie go to Silver Shamrock and find that Harry picked up the order of masks on the 21st. Buddy Cupfer and his family show up to get their order, and we learn that Buddy is the number one salesman of Silver Shamrock masks in the country, and he's given a tour of the factory, and he asks if Chalice and Ellie can join them. So the tour begins, and it's a lot like Willy Wonka's and Timmy Tonka's tours, and Buddy's son, Little Buddy, is kind of like all the kids from Willy Wonka combined, and Mr. Cochran gives him a Peter Pumpkin O'Shaughnessy mask that has been through the mysterious final process. On my factory tour, Timmy Tonka gave everyone their own five-panel folder box with the center flap, now we learn that the five panel folder box with the center flap is similar to the regular five panel folder, except the five panel with the center flap is sealed at the center seam on the top, which makes it easier to load products, but it's not quite as strong as the FPF or five panel folder. Like, I'm surprised I remember all that. Like, the entire time Timmy Tonka was slurring his words pretty bad, and all the while he was making a big show of it to make sure that we all saw the gun he had in his waistband. Chalice realizes that a lot of Cochran's goons look just like the man who killed Harry, and then Ellie notices her father's station wagon in the warehouse. They decide to leave town and contact the police, but when Chalice tries to call, a recording says that the call can't go through. Chalice goes back to the room and finds Ellie missing, and Cochran's 80s Reaganite thugs bust in. We must think outside the box if you want to synergize and grow the brand. He manages to get away and sneaks his way back to the factory where Ellie is being held. And when he breaks in, he gets attacked by one of Cochran's guards. Chalice fights him and punches through his stomach and finds that he's full of applesauce, which is of course the power source for all robots. And then Cochran takes Chalice prisoner. We finally get to Halloween and they take Chalice to final processing, and we find that the missing stone from Stonehenge is deep below Silver Shamrock, and even a fragment of the stone holds magical powers. And Cochran sets up a demonstration with the Cupfer family. Gather round your TV set, put on your masks, and watch. <laughs> You know, you're out searching for snakes, but the real snakes are the ones that were in our face all along. We then see kids all across America wearing their silver shamrock masks, and they announce that there'll be a big giveaway at nine, and all the children need to watch with their masks on. I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. A joke on the children. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of cheap. Pulling a practical joke on a child is like the easiest thing in the world you can do. Cochran tells them that Halloween was the start of the year in their old Celtic lands, when the barriers between the real and unreal would be down. Halloween was the festival of Samhain, the last of the great ones, and the children are to be a sacrifice and will lead to a new world full of witchcraft. So he puts a mask on Chalice and leaves a TV on for him, but Chalice manages to escape with only 50 minutes left. Chalice tries to warn his ex-wife to get rid of the masks, but she refuses because she thinks he's drunk. I mean, he most likely is still drunk, but she shouldn't just assume. So he frees Ellie and they sneak down to the stone, 
and Chalice turns on the commercial and dumps a box of the emblems down and kills all the robots. And then the big stone makes Cochrane disappear and it blows up the whole factory. There's only 12 minutes left until 9, and as they're driving away, Ellie attacks Chalice, and we get jump scared three times by the same attack. <laughs> each more terrifying than the last. So Chalice crashes into a tree and we discover that Ellie was a robot. I don't think she was supposed to have been a robot the entire time, but they most likely created a robot clone after they kidnapped her, and they never really explain it. So she's either been dead all day, or she died in the explosion. Chalice runs to a gas station and calls the TV stations to frantically try to get them to not play the commercial. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween. Please excuse the interruption. We are having technical problems. Please stand by. It's time. It's time. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Take out the third channel, the third channel. It's still running. Stop it, please. For God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to... Please stop it. Stop it now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 Now, they wanted the ending to be ambiguous, but the original cut was going to have the Silver Shamrocks theme playing with the sound of children screaming to signify that he failed, and the novelization flat out states that the commercial played and Chalice failed. So what other movies can you think of where the hero fails? Fire them off in the comments down below. So that was Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen it, and it wasn't as bad as everyone made it out to be. I mean, of course, everyone just hated it because it had the Halloween name and didn't have Michael Myers, but I mean, it had decent acting some good kills, and it gave us the best, and as far as I know, only final dad on a horror movie, and it had a pretty good sense of dread that just built up until you just get to that downer ending. Like if it would've just been called Season of the Witch or Silver Shamrock, it probably would've been received much better. 